Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little knife. This is the CRKT Wrinkle Number Two. Um, first off, I want to thank my buddy Joe's Decaccio. It's gonna be a long review, guys. Buckle in uh, for sending this little guy along. He done some customization work to it, and he donated it to me just uh, out of entertainment. And then I want to thank my buddy Kurt for sending this little guy along, which is pristine. Uh, for the review, just included it in the package. Beautiful thing. Um, next thing, this is a Ken Onion design. Ken Onion is a really well-known and well-respected knife designer with quite the sense of humor, and uh, this is indeed one of his things. Um, and now let's do a little size comparison. Now, first off, of course, your Spyderco Delica right here. Uh, next thing, we've got the Ontario Rat number two, and here's your Rat number one. Uh, so there you go. Uh, what else is on the table here? Here's your Spyderco Dragonfly, which is another small knife. Uh, that's good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Chris Reed Knives, Lodge Sabenza. And then finally, maybe the most apt size comparison for this little guy. This is a um, Baby Ruth chocolate bar. So uh, there you go. Let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular uh, pocket knife. Mm, tasty. So on the good side, first off, I do love the size very much. It comes in and the blade length uh, right around 2.6, 2.75 inches. And that is, well, a beautiful thing. Um, that means it's going to be okay at a lot of places, even with pretty strict rules on knife length, like casinos or maybe uh, horse racing tracks, which means this is the perfect companion for shooting some craps or talking to a man about a horse. Mind you, though, it is bigger than 2.5 inches, so this is not the very best choice if your steamer is going to stop in Cleveland or any other city with really restricted knife laws. Next thing, this knife does not have a thumb stud. Uh, it's flipper only. And this is beautiful because it means that, well, if you're cutting into something like, especially something that's relatively thick, uh, like a cheese, along those lines, um, it will not get caught up on that. Because, and that's beautiful because no one likes getting caught when they cut the cheese. Next thing, blade on this guy, not too thick, which is good. It actually makes for pretty decent slicing. Compare it right here to the Spyderco Delica. It's in that same vicinity. This may not be the very best knife for food prep and baking, but you know what? It'll still part off the Yule log if need be. Um, next thing about this guy, I, you know, I like the fact that it is actually relatively smooth in the pocket overall. I mean, it's got a nice non-aggressive spine jimping here. I mean, you will have zero problem reaching past this guy into the bowels of your pocket. No issue there. And of course, the clip, speaking of the clip, um, is pretty secure. I mean, it's got a lot of tension to it. So you're going to have, uh, you're not going to like bend over and and have one of these come flying out. That's that's never a good thing. Next thing, the sharpening choil on this guy is nice. It's well done, and it helps to make sure that the edge stays good and regular. That's nice, and the ergonomics on it actually are pretty good too. Um, and it's that's because of the contouring here. You can see it's got these nice little rest rings right here, and that's a beautiful thing. And it's even got a little bit of polish to it, and you know, I, I love that. This knife is actually reasonably well put together. I mean, it's for a price point, but the thing is, it's nice to see a CRKT knife that is only crappy on the outside. The uh, price on this guy is actually not bad either. It's it's just coming in at 25 bucks, and you know you don't have to be a duke to afford one. Huh? Compared to a bunch of other good manual flippers, that that I mean that's that's squat. Let's be real here. And uh, there are new versions of this guy available, but unfortunately they are only available in other more boring colors. I generally welcome a nice diversity of anno, but um, in this case all you've got is black, orange, green, and red. And uh, you know what? You should talk to your doctor if those colors have that same immediate visual association for you. Uh, then finally, I gotta say, um, this knife has a real sense of humor to it. I mean, maybe it's a little bit corny, let's be real here, but I like the fact that it doesn't seem to be taking itself too seriously, so that's the good to me, is that the knife's got a sense of humor. There are some newer versions in other colors if you want them. I don't know why you'd want them. Um, the price is pretty good. It's well put together. It's got nice ergonomics due to this contouring here. It's got a nice sharpening choil, a secure clip, smooth in the pocket. The blade isn't too thick. No thumb stud, and uh, it's under that three-inch magic line. Let's talk about what's great about this particular knife. Look, the great thing to me about this knife is actually the action. Because, look, when you hit this flipper tab, it flies out of there like a bean burrito with a coffee chaser. I mean, it is seriously a great action. Part of that is because it is IKBS, Icoma Core Bearing System, which gives it some exceptional smoothness, but it's also got a really solid detent, or I guess sphincter in this case. And, you know, it's got a nice, good, quick shot to it. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. But more interestingly, it's actually a manual flipper. This knife has no spring, no assist whatsoever. I mean, this is one of those things you want to take care of without any kind of assistance, and I think 
It's a great alternative. I mean, there were other good knives in the lower end which have decent flippers, but they usually assisted actions. This guy is not. And so, to me, that is absolutely what is great about this, is that this knife has just a beautiful, smooth movement. You don't need to bear down at all. Uh, let's talk about what's bad. So, okay, on the bad side, first off, unfortunately, the IKBS, Ico McCord Bearing System, is a total pain in the butt to reassemble and maintain, because of all those loose bearings, if you watch this assembly video. So you're going to need a thicker oil, maybe even mineral oil, which is actually sold as a laxative in a lot of places. So there you go. Um, and I actually did end up having to disassemble this guy twice, once this one and once this one, because the very first video I took was corrupt, so that ended up being a lot of time on the stool. Um, anyways, Blake on this guy. The blade on this guy is all belly. I mean, that's fine for some tasks, especially like food prep or if you're like cutting brownies in a bowl or something, but it's not all that practical for other uses, um, so keep that in mind. Um, it is going to be a little bit slippery with this relatively smooth aluminum here. Um, so it's not really going to be the best choice if you get wet. Say, if you're dropping the kids off the pool, you decide to take a little dung yourself. That That's not going to be where this knife shines. Um, next thing, speaking of the aluminum, is that unfortunately these screws go straight into the aluminum here. And what that means is that if those screw holes strip out here, this guy is unfortunately heading straight to the dump. That's not great. The uh, backspacers. This is sort of a nitpick, but it was really annoying if you watch this assembly video. Unfortunately, there's no collar. There's no something sticking up into the scales here, and so that means that during this assembly, or just in general, if one of these screws out go uh, falls out, the backspacer is just going to go flying, and the knife is going to collapse in on itself. And, you know, I, I gotta say, the very last thing you want is something like that slipping out the backside here. And then finally, on the, uh, on the steel front, everybody knew I was going to go here. The steel on this guy is not great. I mean, it's a $25 knife, so I get it, but Aus 8 steel is not a supreme performer. I mean, it's okay, I guess. You're going to be able to do your business, but the softness is a major concern. So, uh, there you go. That's the bad. The steel isn't great. The uncollared backspaces are a total pain in the neck for reassembly and could pose a problem if this screw comes out. The screws do go right into the aluminum, which could again pose a problem. Uh, it is kind of slippery, although the, the ergonomics help. The blade is all belly, and IKBS is just a gigantic pain in the butt. Uh, let's talk about what's ugly, because there's something ugly here. Look, the ugly here is pretty obvious. In fact, the moment you take this out of your pocket, anybody who looks at this knife is going to instantly recognize the ugly here. And that is, of course, that this knife is tip-down only carry. Um, because seriously, with a flipper tab, this is a crime. Because, they, you know, basically, if this is sitting in your pocket, something that's flipper tabbed and bam, the knife is just opened out into the pocket, into your, your, your femoral artery, all sorts of unpleasant areas here. I feel like it's really unacceptable, as opposed to with a uh, tip-down, uh, tip-up carry, where the, the, the blade is being kept in by the, the pocket there. It's kind of hard to tend, it's not terrible, but I still ended up feeling like I could only carry this guy in my left side uh, because there the pocket is up against there and you know I think actually upon some further consideration that that may actually be a cultural note a bit of cultural sensitivity and a nod to the fact that in many cultures these sorts of things are only to be handled with the left hand anyways so uh, there you go that is the ugly here is that tip down only carry so obvious how do people ever overlook that um let's move on to the final conclusions Look, I, final conclusions, I think a lot of collectors are just pooped from looking through the options for low-end flippers. So I don't think they'd naturally lay down skid marks stopping in front of this little guy. The thing is, this is a pretty well-polished little... That one was too easy. Um, it's got great action, nice ergonomics, a pretty playful design, and I think CRKT made this one like they gave a crap, which is actually really nice given the price point. Am I going to recommend it for everybody? Well, no, because uh, the look of the thing, I mean, it's universally appealing, and the action is quite good. But the thing is, with the tip up, uh, tip down only carry, I, I think it's just shy to the mark for me to recommend it, just overall, generally. But the thing is, this is the wrinkle too, and that gives me hope that there will be a third version which might offer tip up carry. But uh, as for now, if you need a knife with decent action at a decent price, even though this might not be my favorite knife at this price point, it is a pretty solid number two. <laughs> So, I hope this has been interesting. I am deeply mature, and I hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. <laughs> Bye now.